everybody, I need your help on this one. Buy, buy Adobe Lightroom. So here's the issue. I've had a few people ask me about what are some alternatives over Adobe products, especially Adobe Lightroom. Are we ready to discuss this? Let's take a look at some free stuff. Are we ready? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist pushing ourselves to think creatively out of the box. All right, I had a couple interesting uh, emails that came to me asking me about what would you recommend as a software to, to uh, replace Adobe Lightroom because I'm dropping Adobe products. So uh, I know there's a movement out there where people are leaving Adobe by the thousands, you know, internationally. Um, just as a heads up for you people that uh, are new to the channel, yes, I, <laughs> I've been using Adobe's product for decades and no, I'm not leaving. I'm not substituting it with something else, uh, you know, but uh, my point is, that yes, a lot of people are leaving, and I understand most of them are hobbyists, whatever, but um, the question I got asked was, you know, are there any alternatives to Adobe Lightroom? Because I just, I wanna leave. And I also, interesting on this, I got a couple of emails, private emails based on, what are your thoughts about this particular software? That is a free software that is a replacement for Adobe Lightroom. and. Uh, my reaction to this is, well, I really can't make a comment on that software because I would never use it because I don't use Adobe, Adobe Lightroom. So I want to clarify something for new people. Um, other ones that have been watching me for a while know this, but um, I stopped doing event photography in 2019. I always used a Lightroom. The earlier days, I didn't because Lightroom did not exist way back in, say, the, um, you know, like 2005, six, seven, when I was doing weddings. So I'll share with you what I was using at that time, which was free, but it won't be free for a lot of people. But my point is that when you're getting used to a software, and I, I loved Lightroom, but when I stopped doing weddings and other events, I just stopped using Lightroom. I'm just using Photoshop because a lot of my work with clients is just a handful of images or a single images that's going to be a big wall print. So, you know, what I do versus what I did in the past is different. So I just don't use Lightroom. I think it's a great product, but I just, you know, again, I'm repeating myself. Sorry. I just don't use it. So a couple of comments came in and said, what are your thoughts about this particular software, which is a replacement for Lightroom? And it's called Dark Table. I had never heard of it <clears throat> at all. Um, I can't really comment whether it's good or bad because I'm not going to use it because I don't, it's not my, you know, what I do. I, I don't use Lightroom, so I don't need a replacement for it. So I went to the website. Let me, let's jump over here and take a look at it right now. Um, this is, again, Darktable. I'll just, you know, go to darktable.org. It's been around for quite a few years. There are a lot of free tutorials regarding this. I would definitely download it. It's free. And by the way, I need your help. For the people that are watching this, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a few questions at the end, and I need you to make comments to help out other people who are looking for an alternative to Adobe Lightroom. And so I'll mention that uh, toward the end, but we're going to look at some other softwares here too, Nat. But you know, some are free and some are not, but there are alternatives. Okay, so again, go check it out. And if you are using Darktable, if you can do me a favor, go into the comment section, Please explain, you know, is this good or bad? Do you like this product and why? And please don't say, oh, because it's free. That's sort of obvious, right? It's, does it do the task? Does it do the job? Because, you know, if, if it's free, okay, big deal. But if it doesn't do what I needed to do, then it's, it's totally useless, right? So please explain if you are using this. And by the way, it's available for you know, both Mac and PC. If I'm not mistaken, it's also available for Linux. But, um, you know, why do you use it? What do you like about it? And, you know, maybe help other people as to maybe they should take a look at this software. I mean, definitely, if you're looking for an alternative, dive into it. It's free, so it's not going to cost you anything other than your time, right? So, again, um, I don't have time to play with it. But let's take a look at what I used to use back in 2005 when I first got my first, um, you know, 
a DSLR and I started doing weddings and stuff. And um, I didn't understand what is a RAW file, you know, versus a JPEG. So in the very beginning, I was just shooting JPEG. And the reason is, what do I do with the RAW file? There was no such such thing as Lightroom at the time. Well, if we go over here to, now, unfortunately, you have to be a Canon shooter, but hang in there if you're not. Um, we'll look at other softwares. But Canon, based on your camera that you have, if you go to their uh, website, and for me, it's uh, USA.com, uh, I'm sorry, uh, USA.Canon.com support. If you go to the support section, you can find your ca uh, camera, like mine is the um, uh, Canon 6D Mark II. And under the download section, you can find the software, and uh, right here it is. Let's see if I can find it. And it's free, by the way. It's called Digital Photo Professional. Uh, right now, it's up to 4.18, whatever. Uh, you could download it and use it. If you try to download it, it's going to ask for the serial number of your camera, all right? So that means you have to have a Canon camera that you have purchased and registered with them. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to download it. But it's free software. Uh, it works great, but the problem with it is, is it was a little you know clunky on coordinating between that and say a Photoshop. There are too many extra steps. Maybe it's improved. I don't know. Um, but again, if you're a Canon shooter, also take a look at this and see what you think, and maybe incorporate that into your workflow. Okay, if you're not a Canon shooter, I think Nikon. I'm not sure about Sony. Um, I think they do have softwares out there for you, but I don't think it's free. So if you're a Sony shooter, if you can do me a favor, let the Sony people know, hey, they offer software for you, but is it free? I mean, I mean, I don't know, but you know, mention that or how much is it? Uh, if you're a Nikon shooter, again, do they offer software for your for your camera to to uh, you know process raw files so you don't need Lightroom? But is it free or do you have to pay for it? That that would help some people out. Okay, let's talk about some other alternatives though out there that <clears throat> you might want to take a look at and definitely download the trial version and play with it. Okay, and one is Capture One. So I'm going to jump over here to their website and. And uh, I'm going to vent a little bit on Adobe right now, because uh, if you go to uh, this product here, Capture One, uh, a lot of people love this product. It's far better if um, if you need to tether uh, into the software. You can tether into Adobe Lightroom, but it's a little on the slow side where this is really fast. And of course, uh, I tether once in a while, but I, I use a different software that has to do with um, the equipment I use. Uh, maybe I'll make that a subject in the future and that. But um, here's what I want to talk about. If you go to something called pricing, and again, you can download the trial version, um, you can outright purchase it to get what they call a perpetual license. $299, you got it. I think you get like up updates uh, for a year, and then after that, no more updates. You can still use the product, but if you want to update, there probably there's going to be a discount to that. Or you can go subscription-based right there. This is something I wish Adobe would have done. Give us the choice to outright get a perpetual license or get the subscription-based, right? And give us a choice. But they just went to, to you know one angle and that's subscription-based. I know a lot of people don't like that. More people that don't like it are the ones that do this as a hobby. I get it because, you know, if money's tight, stuff like that, um, that could be a problem or issue. Um, if you're in it as a business, well, okay, for Photoshop for, you know, the 10 bucks or now people are complaining, oh, it's going to be $15. Well, that's not going to make or break me. And it's still the $10 if I pay a year in advance. So it still comes out to like the 10 bucks a month type thing. But I wish Adobe would do this. What are your thoughts? Do you think they should offer both, you know, a perpetual license? Like you, you got it, you could use it and it never times out. And if you want to get the update after a year, because you like some of the new features, uh, you could spend, you know, a little bit less to get the update or just keep using what you got because you go, Hey, the new stuff, that's cute and nice, but I would never use it. You know, give us a choice versus always subscription base. Okay, so that's another choice out there. Another one, uh, which you've seen me feature, but I never really talked about it because I use it as a plugin with Photoshop, and that is Luminar Neo. And again, in Luminar Neo, it's uh, the same thing. You can go subscription base or just pay for it outright. In fact, if we go to pricing here, uh, they have what they call a catalog version uh, of the software as a standalone. 
And so basically that sort of replaces uh, Adobe Lightroom. Now I do know personally uh, where I'm from in Michigan, in the United States, I do know a, fa a handful of professional photographers that use Luminar Neo 100%, that is their product. They don't own Adobe products at all. They get what they need from this software. It, you know, so the point is, if the software meets your needs, why not, right? So uh, again, subscription base, uh, you can get that if you want, or a perpetual license. Now I have the perpetual license and uh, I can get you know updates free for a year after that. If I want to get updates and that, I got to pay a fee. I forgot how much it is, $50 or something like that. But my point is it gives me the choice. It gives me the option to either go subscription-based or getting the perpetual uh, license right there. So that's an alternative if you want to just say, hey, I'm leaving Adobe and I need something to replace Lightroom along with Photoshop. Hey, take a look at the software, get the trial version, play with it, see what you think. Another one that's becoming very popular out there is DxO. Uh, Photo Lab 8. And let me close out of that little. T and uh, if same thing over here, if I go to like buy now in the software, so let's take a look at this. Again, this one, there is no subscription. You outright, it's a perpetual license. Uh, 229, it's showing that, hey, four payments. Well, that is with PayPal. PayPal's offer that if you purchase something, you could pay for it over a four month period. So it's showing that there. Uh, if you own the software already and you want to get an upgrade because you get free updates for a year, but then after that, uh, if you see some new features and a new version and you really like it, okay, it's going to cost you $109. But at least you have the choice to upgrade if you want. If you don't, you just keep using the version that you have. And I like that model the best. I wish Adobe would do it. Do it. So uh, let's hang in there and I, I, I'm going to throw out some questions for you. But number one, what do you think about Adobe offering that? Let me buy a perpetual license and let me decide if I want to get updates, you know, in the future versus always a subscription. Give me the choice either way. The other thing I want you to do is if you could help out the viewers of this uh, YouTube channel, and that is what are you using if you left Adobe? What are you using to substitute Adobe Lightroom? And make some comments about, you know, what the product is, obviously, and why do you like it? And if you are using, because I had a couple comments about uh, the Darktable software, what's your opinion on that software? Okay, help some of these people out, maybe, to make a, you know, educated decision uh, on things, only for, uh, obviously, the ones that want to leave Adobe. You know, I'm not leaving Adobe on this, but I think it's important that uh, I do recommend it and, and showcase other alternatives out there and not just always be Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop uh, all the time. Because, again, we need to talk about photography in general and philosophy of doing things and going out and shooting and hardware and other accessories and stuff that we use in photography, not always software all the time. Okay, so with that out of the way, if you can do me a favor, if you're new to the channel, uh, if you could like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed to the channel, and uh, hit the notification bell. That way you'll get notified. I try to do a video once every week and I do a once a month sit back and chill out where I try to address some of the questions that people ask me by private email or maybe in the comments in the show notes. Also, thank you for the people that have been supporting the channel by going to buymecoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Uh, the link will be in the show notes. I really, really appreciate this. This is not a, a big channel and it keeps me motivated on putting out these videos. All right, people, until next time, let's get that camera out. Let's practice. See ya.